Hey there, what is a data warehouse? That's what you want to know. Well, my name is Ivan Novik, and I'm the Director of Product Management at VMware working on Greenfilm Database, which is one of the biggest data warehouses out there in the world. And I'm going to explain to you what is a data warehouse. So what you're going to learn in this video is going to be what is a data warehouse? What is a data mart? How is a warehouse different than a database? How is a warehouse different than a data lake? Should a data warehouse be in the public cloud, the private cloud, or on-premises? What role does the warehouse play in business, whether it's a large, medium, or small business? How to build a corporate strategy for an optimal data warehouse? How to choose the right technology for your data warehouse? How to design your data warehouse schema? And how to keep the data in your data warehouse as new and fresh as possible? So a lot of stuff packed into this. So let's get started. OK, what is a data warehouse? Uh, data warehouse is really, the definition of the term really means you take a normal relational database that has tables, rows, columns, it's structured data, but in the, the difference between a database and a data warehouse is a data warehouse is meant to be large and it's meant to be for analytics and reporting as opposed for online transaction processing. So an online transaction processing, you may sell a product and record the sale but in a data warehouse you sell you you store all of the records of sales for the last 10 years and you do analytics and reporting what is a data mart well sometimes a data warehouse can be so big that you want to create another copy of your data of your data you want to have a small segment of your data you can create what's called a data mart so in a sense a warehouse gives you that analogy of this huge building the mart is that little store on the corner. So it really is serving some customers with a smaller section of the data that's more nimble and quick to access and has kind of a special purpose, kind of like a convenience store. How is a data warehouse different from a database? Well, like we mentioned, data warehouses are databases, but they're large. They store, they tend to store all of the data from a company or from an organization or most of the data or tons of the data and categorize everything in it over a historical basis. They're still databases, but the technology used to create a data warehouse is fundamentally different than, the, than a database that isn't the warehouse because it needs to scale, it needs to be big. And, and that's really the main difference between a warehouse and a database. How is a warehouse different from a data lake? Well, data lake terminology came about with the advent of Hadoop and really a data lake um, was invented as a terminology because it wasn't a database, right? A, a database is all structured data, rows and columns. A data lake in, fundamentally will store data in files. So you'll have a file system or a place to store files. And then in that lake, you can store raw data, unstructured data, semi-structured data. You can store, you know, originally, Internet companies would store their web logs. So these are log files. They collect and store everything with the idea that don't delete anything and we'll figure out how to use it when we need it. The, the disadvantage to a data lake, it's not pre-processed and as ready to use as data in a data warehouse or a database. It's more raw. So you can store everything at a cheaper price point, but when it comes time to use the data, you've got really um, a more complex environment to access and manage. Um, so it's, it's a trade-off between kind of the performance and the structure of a warehouse versus the, the capacity and the low price of a data lake. Okay, should the warehouse, should you build your warehouse in the public cloud, the private cloud or on premises? I think the, the real answer to this question is any of the above, right? What is the difference between the public cloud, the private cloud, and on-premises from an in information technology IT point of view? Really, all of these instances are servers. There are servers running 99% of the time, either x86 or ARM CPUs. They're usually running some version of Linux. They're usually connected over TCP IP. They may be in the cloud. They may be in a private cloud. They may be on-premises. This really comes down to your IT strategy. Does your company want to use leverage a public cloud for your, your IT? Do you want to have a private cloud for your IT? Do you want to have your own gear that you manage and maintain? That's your IT question. It's really independent of your data warehouse question. 
the data warehouse should be where your IT team is comfortable because it's just another software product. You run it in, in any of these locations and then um, it should be nearby where your data is. So for example, if you're generating your data on premise, you should probably put your data warehouse on premise so that it's not a big distance to move the data. So really, it's really just a logistical question. There's no fundamental reason why it should be in any specific location. You could have it underground for all I care if that's where you're building your servers and maintaining, maintaining your IT. So it's really can be anywhere. What role does the data warehouse play in a business, large, medium, or small? Well, um, I think data warehouses play a bigger role the bigger the business is, because the bigger your business is, the more data you have, the more you need to consolidate, and the more benefit you have from doing the analysis, because you can save or make more money with, with insight. Data warehouses are often called decision support systems because they help businesses make decisions. That could be real time, or that could be based on reading reports and making long-term planning. So really by taking all of the business data, whether it be sales, orders, payroll, HR, um, or, and then even extended data sets, like um, depending on your, your, your industry, if you're working in, let's say a shipping company, you wanna store packages, all the packages and maybe their locations, where were the packages at any point in time? So the more complex your business, the more events happening in the business, the more data you'll end up collecting and you can leverage, combine it into your warehouse, be able to join it, interjoin it, query it millions of times, Per day or over huge analyses. So whether you're small, medium, or large, a data warehouse can help you make informed decisions in your business. That being said, the bigger the business is and the more complex it is, the more you can gain from having a solid data warehouse strategy. Um, how to build a corporate strategy for an optimal data warehouse? I think the, my initial answer would be start where you are, start collecting data, start treating it like a garden. You don't want to go out into your backyard and see weeds and, and things that are disorganized, right? And that's the same thing with your data. You need to organize your data. You need to understand your business data. You need to know what is it. You need to place it in clean locations that are easily accessible and efficiently accessible by thousands of people in your organization. So start from where you are. If you have nothing, start collecting data, start building a warehouse, start designing a warehouse. And then uh, we'll talk about schema design, but really if you're coming from the other end and you have disparate systems and messy situation and nobody knows where anything is, start documenting and organizing things, start, start making it clean and put it into efficient systems that can um, be protected and can provide fast responses to people who want to ask questions and, and for your business. How to choose the right technology for your data warehouse? Well, um, you really need to look at the, you know, you, if you have a small business and um, you're not having too much data and you're not having a lot of reports that you want to run, there are many databases you can use. You could take MySQL, which is kind of the lightest weight and most ubiquitous um, uh, kind of low cost database. And you can, you can create a database and you can analyze your own data. However, the bigger you are, then I would look into how capable is your data warehouse product? How, how much data can it handle? How many users can it handle? How, many, how much reporting can you do? How much complexity can it handle? Can it handle updates to the data when other people are reading the data? Does it have proper lock? Does it have replication? Does it have ways to protect the data? So really you need to start by looking at the complexity and criticality of your data and then move up the stack from kind of the cheapest product to, to other products as you look and see how important is your data to you, how much are you willing to invest and, and move up to more and more capable products um, and avoid kind of, um, I mean, I would just say avoid um, too much marketing messages. You're looking for a good solid database that can scale, right? And that you can, you can protect and query as much as possible. Don't make it over complex. It's not more complex than that. How to design your schema. Okay, so let's start with some basic ideas. Um, facts and dimensions. 
In a data warehouse, you normally have facts and dimensions. The facts are your, if let's take the shipping case. We're, we're a shipping delivery company. So we have packages, tracking IDs. Every package is gonna be, there's gonna be millions and billions of packages, right? And so those are your facts. What would be your dimensions? Your dimensions are things like shipping centers. There are not that many centers and they don't change that often. So normally what you do is you normalize your data you put the individual elements into tables and you avoid data, duplicu data duplication and think about how, what tables need to be combined with other tables and create efficient joining keys that you can join together. And then it will, it will partially come down to which technology you use, but essentially you're avoiding duplication, you're minimizing storage, you're making it easy to join and bring things together and making it creating indexes when needed to quickly look for the, the right data that you need if you need to drill down. So really don't duplicate, keep it clean, separate things into, into, into proper tables and uh, don't um, have the same data again in multiple, multiple tables and think about the user, think about how they're gonna query it and make sure they can join it efficiently. How to keep the data in your data warehouse as new and fresh as possible. Well. You know, traditionally, there was, there's something called ETL, extract, transform, and load. Traditionally, people would load their data on a daily basis and update it, and then maybe take some old data out on a daily basis. Um, things went from daily. Now, um, as you get more intense, you start doing hourly or you start doing mini batches. And these days, the ultimate solution would be streaming. So you can do streaming data ingestion, constantly updating your data as it's fed from your business. And that connects to things like RabbitMQ or Kafka or some sort of a streaming engine that can buffer the incoming data, can be automatically sucked into your warehouse. And then as people are querying, they're seeing the latest data. So really moving from a daily ETL to an hourly ETL to a continual streaming environment. So I hope this gives you a good insight into what a data warehouse is. Um, if you're looking for a super powerful warehouse based on PostgreSQL, definitely check out Greenplum. That's the product we make. Subscribe to our Greenplum YouTube channel and you'll learn a lot more about data analytics and reporting and data warehousing. Thanks a lot and take care.